Hello everyone, my name is Corazar, and welcome back to the Incomplete Guide to Star Sector. We are, as promised, back at home, and I have been preparing since the end of the last episode. Because we, today, are going to go and take on the Ziggurat, which is the story mission in the Galatia Academy questline, where we have to go to this dark sort of starless planet, a rogue planet, if you will, and investigate this alpha site that Kaliz Estrella, or at least following her trail, has led us to. Now, I have been making preparations for that by adjusting our fleet. So a few episodes ago, we went and we attacked the Ziggurat just to sort of show how tough a fight it is. And that was with our sort of usual fleet. You don't need a ton of to beat it, but you do need to come prepared. And I'll actually bring a ton just because I like to, um, well, I like to not lose too many ships, and having more ships means it splits its focus. So, yeah, I do that. But the big thing with the Ziggurat is that it is a phase ship, so it succumbs to pressure really easily because once its flux is maxed out, then its options are going to be to pop back out of phase space and vent flux, or try to sort of phase back in and out and not really be able to use weapons. In the former, it's going to die pretty quickly because it has to dump flux for a good seven or eight seconds. And in the second case, well, it's useless. It can't shoot its guns. The second thing you need to do or need to bring is point defense and lots of it. Now I have already in our fleet a decent point defense ship. It is our Medusa. It has four burst PD lasers and expanded magazines, and that's a pretty good point defense setup for a ship of this size, a destroyer. Our other ships, like our Odyssey, has point defense in the form of these support fighters. They're pretty good, but they tend to get uh, pretty well pasted by the moats that the Ziggurat deploys. And last episode, we got our hands on this ship, the Executor, and this is an example of both point defense, not in spades, but a decent amount, as well as pressure that I mentioned. So we have here, well, hypervelocity drivers. These are just sort of generic weapons you want to put on the front of the ship anyway. But here I have high intensity lasers. These deal 500 damage a second, which means that against armor, it's 1,000 damage a second. With 1,000 range, or in our case, with the integrated targeting unit installed, it has, what, uh, 1,600 range. On top of that, we have squalls. These will shoot a continuous stream of missiles, which will distract the ziggurat's moats, and they should go after the missiles instead of attacking the ship. Because those moats deal a ton of EMP damage. You want to see a ship shut down? Those moats are, will do it absolutely really quickly. However, if we can keep this ship at least mobile and functional, then it'll be able to deliver some pressure with the lasers, and then it'll also be able to distract the moats with these guys, the squalls, and shoot them down with the flak cannons it has. But we aren't going to fly this ship. No, this isn't ours. This is our ship. And as you can see, this is a Dominator. I actually grabbed the one that we had purchased from an admiral at some random hegemony bar. And this is a really, really great setup for specifically fighting the Ziggurat. Everything here is point defense except for these three proximity charge launchers. What these do, let's go ahead and we'll just run the simulation here. Let's go up against, oh, uh, let's pick something. Uh, do we do a doom? Let's, let's do a doom. Sure, why not? This is a phase ship, so it should be a decent demonstration. So we are going to pop up here and get into battle with the Doom. Hi, Doom! And these proximity charge launchers are set to alternating fire, so they'll just sort of shoot a continuous stream. And as you can see, we have nothing except PD and these launchers. And all we're going to do here is we are going to just shoot these things in this thing's face. 
and its options quickly become unfazed and die, or stay phased and be useless. And once its flux fills up, it doesn't even have that option. So this is a great way to both pressure the ziggurat as well as to deal with all of its moats. These things, the devastators, can really, really annihilate those moats right quick. So we're going to fly the, the dominator. And I should note that if you are built right, it is possible to beat the ziggurat with just this ship. Now, I have done it before once in another world. It's not that special, <laughs> but you basically need a whole bunch of these red, uh, the combat tier skills, especially point defense. But the way this is built here is that it is designed. I do have integrated point defense AI. This will give our point defense the best tracking possible, as well as dealing an extra 50% damage to missiles. And I think the most are classified as missiles. I'm pretty sure they are. We also have the automated repair unit that cuts down on repair time in battle. We have resistant flux conduits to reduce the amount of EMP damage we take. Solar shielding to cut down on energy damage, and most of this thing's attacks are energy, and of course, ITU. So, without further ado, let's go and give this fight a whirl. Let's pop up here, and go. And we are going to just pop into space here because it's a little far away. And off we go. Okay, folks, here we are. I'm going to go ahead and save, and if you are doing this mission, I suggest you would save here as well before you even go in. And we're just going to pop on in and take the fight to the ziggurat. Okay, here we are. Let's get its attention. Hey, buddy. So in order to get the quest completed, you don't have to actually fight or defeat this vessel. When you first contact it, you can I'll pause and read this and your folks will freak out about the moats. You get the detailed scan of unknown vessel acquired. At this point, you've now completed this part of the quest and you can go back to Galatia if you can disengage, which you can with the green option here, as long as you have some story points and otherwise it will try to attack you. If you open a comm link, you get a unique little bit of text here. Let's go ahead and read that. We're going to go ahead and engage. We're going to transfer our command to the Dominator. And away we go. Now what we're going to do here, I'm going to go for the, the massive overkill option because otherwise there's a decent chance you might just die because there's a good amount of luck involved in especially the the single like by yourself runs with this ship there's a really good amount of luck involved so i don't recommend relying on that but i'm bringing in some big ships because i need decoys i need decoys to be able to basically take the heat for me until i can get up and close and personal because once we're in range once we can actually reach the ziggurat with our devastators then they'll be able to shoot the moats right out of its tailpipe as they're coming out we're bringing along the omens and the shade for some extra point events with their emp emitters and we're going to bring along let's see we have you we're going to bring along our carriers to basically give us a fighter smoke screen and what we're going to do here is we're going to bring these guys with us everybody else goes with him and then we go in and we're going to basically hang back and let the other ships go in and start taking the heat first before we zip in we want to make sure that these moats have basically discharged against somebody and then we can go in and that should 
Yeah, go, go kill him, dude. Uh, up there goes. Ooh, goodbye. Farewell. <laughs> Farewell, my friend. So yeah, those modes just... Man. Let's try to get up in here. There we go. Okay, we're pretty close. Need to get a little closer yet. Come on, get out of the way. There we go. So now you'll see... It's... Flux is going up and up and up. And there we go. There goes our point defense just shooting those things out of the sky. Oh, come on, get... No! No, stop pushing me away! Oh, my goodness. <laughs> You're actually getting in my way, ships. Come on. Okay, let's keep going. And... Yep, it's taken some serious hurt. But its flux is maxed out. There isn't a whole lot it can do. And there we go. So a notable difference to how this fight went the first time, when we didn't really have the ability to pressure it that much. Now we did lose a couple ships. That's okay. Ah, sad face. I'll still recover you. Now, regardless of how you defeated it, once you have beaten the ship, if you choose to do so, then you'll be given the option to explore the ship. And go ahead and read this if you'd like. And this one, your chief engineer tells you it is a truly one-of-a-kind ship, and they are correct that there are no other ziggurats. So if you lose it, it is gone. But we have the option to recover it. It'll have structural damage. Uh, I'm not sure if these are random or not, but I seem to get the same ones every time. So we have structural damage, faulty automated subsystems, and faulty power grid. Even with most of those, it is still a wild, wild ship. It is always called the TTS for Tritachion ship, Xenorphica. And we're done. Now we do need to survey this world here. Not survey, but we need to send the salvage team down. I have already read all of this a couple episodes ago, so I will just click through this slowly to let you pause and read if you'd like. I'll scroll back up here if I was talking over reading this. And there's that. We got a journal, we got a paper book. And basically people are getting nervous about something and going outside. And then they sing to me, everything will be all right. Sounds just like the strange singing we had heard from the moats. And there we have it. We are now done with this part of the quest. I'm going to wait a minute for this to stop flashing. There we go. And we'll pop out. And if you hadn't already gotten the cache of weapons, there is a small cache in the far northeast portion of the screen of the map. So from here, let's take a look at our new ship. It comes with basically new weapons, yep. And it has it's a phase ship, regular right phase field, delicate machinery as usual, but it has experimental phase coils. These give it a massive, massive reduction in the cooldown on the phase cloak, which means this thing can pop in and pop out of reality pretty constantly. And you'll see, even with all of these D mods, it's still got pretty good armor, decent hull, a lot of flux. It's all great stuff. So let's go ahead and we're going to probably take this back to Galatia now, because that is what we have to do. Yep, let's go do that. And we're going to deliver, well, the ship. We get to keep the ship, by the way. She's not going to take it from us. But we are going to deliver the ship in order for her to study it temporarily and make the most out of 
what Tritycon has been working on in the black, on the black site. For you. No, thank you. Now, do note that if you have the Ziggurat, or the Xenorphica, in your fleet, oh, wrong place, then other fleets, every fleet in the game always knows who you are, even if your transponder is off. You can still go transponder off to sneak into places, but any fleets you encounter will always know who you are. So make sure that if you are trying to be sneaky and need to not damage reputation with the faction, don't carry the ship in your fleet. There are also several encounters that can happen with the ship in your fleet, so be aware that you might be accosted by different factions occasionally. Let's go talk to Provost Baird. It's been a while, I think. Captain, I'm very pleased that you've returned with this valuable data, and she pulls up a schematic of the Ziggurat class prototype. This fascinating prototype. The manta ray design spins slowly between you and the provost. She seems to be rubbing two fingers together, contemplating this thing before her. The starship itself is irrelevant. You may keep it. That's unexpected. Baird continues, It is the anomalous device within that interests me, and of course these moats that it appears to create. We've taken thorough scans and will be able to create experimental variations before long. Karuz has been reviewing sensor data. Let me have her explain. The provost taps at her desk console, and the comm display splits to display Scylla Karuz. Provost, yes? Oh, Captain Corazar. Of course, you just arrived. Karuz seems flustered. I was just discussing the scientific value of the find with the captain here, Provost Baird says. We had just arrived at the topic of these anomalous moats. A certain subsystem of the ziggurat display is highlighted, and an approximation of these strange dancing lights appears surrounding the display. Oh yes, um, from our preliminary analysis, it does not appear to be a weapon system exactly. I mean, Karuz looks down, manipulating the display via datapad. She focuses on the two-stage anomalous device, which scales up to fill the shared display. It has been weaponized, but I don't think this is a weapon. It's too... hmm... She considers her words. Unfocused? General purpose? You can see elements of hyperdrive core technology here. A section flashes at Corza's touch. As well as something resembling an Atherton co coil. That stabilizes P-space induction, right? Another portion flashes. Is that a phase coil? Corus looks impressed. Yes, but also no. Um, let me back up, she says, rubbing her eyes. It's as though the Tritachion team stumbled upon a breakthrough in... Well, we don't know exactly what yet, and someone told them to turn it into a weapon system. Analysis, the implications of what we're detecting, I mean, with the instruments we have, we'll need to construct new ones. What we're seeing is unprecedented in terms of even state-of-the-art domain era technology. Cruz looks away, thinking for just a moment. Uh, publicly acknowledged technology, anyway. She turns back to the display, summoning a recording of the moat swarm. And the apparent flocking behavior, though that word implies a volition, which we're not sure even is... Dun-dun. Baird raises a hand to stop the words tumbling from Carew's. That's enough. I understand, Scylla. Your team has a lot of work to do, and we shall ask Gargoyle to trace what information exchange Thomas Kalachor made with Tritachion specific to applications within this Project Ziggurat. Carew's nods. I'll... we'll get back to it. She closes down the display of the ziggurat device and looks to you. This is incredible, Captain. Thank you for this, this opportunity. And she signs off. Despite her inexperience, she's performing well under the pressure, Baird observes with a note of pride. Our hardware team is struggling to follow her pace. Before we conclude, she says, I must of course see to your compensation. She taps out a command sequence, and we get 150,000 credits. ba ba da ba there will be more for you to do here before long, Captain, she says. Unbelievable things. Baird smiles, looking uncharacteristically satisfied, and closes the comm link. Now, we have about, I think it's about a week before we can come back and expect anything to happen. Oh, I didn't know we could do this. So she's like, hey, what's going on? 
Let's tell her about finding the cleared Tritac base site. You upload your salvage team's report and tell Barrett about finding the Tritachion base site, which was cleared and intentionally hidden. I think this is the one up where we fought the Doom fleet. The Provost nods, glancing through your data. If this fits with what we know of Tritachion operations. My predecessor, Thomas Kalachor, assisted the company with, she looks at you carefully, at least one instance of such a black site. The Galicia Academy put its name on resupply missions, presenting them as deep space survey expeditions. The Hegemony never acknowledged this in their persecution of the Galicia Academy, though they obviously knew of it, or know now with the records from Calder's archive. Baird squeezes her eyes shut and adjusts her spectacles, looking vexed. By the missteps of the former provost, perhaps. She turns back to you and says, and clearly someone in Tritachion is up to the same old trick. Perhaps they moved their base after the Gemini investigation of this institution. Perhaps they anticipated a Gemini response. Enough speculation, Baird says after a moment's thought. And that is it. It's not a part of the quest. I don't believe there's anyone else here we can talk to. We can still get jobs from Alvis, so at this point, if you are needing some work, need some money, and the Galatia Academy is your port of call, then this is Getting pretty close to your last chance. And I think Gargoyle... Let's see. Ah, he has some comment on our new ship. I could go ahead and read that. And let's see. What's that supposed to mean? Go ahead and read that. And there we go. So yeah, people just have some comments to say. But at this point, we have a week to wait or so before we need to come back and then talk to Provost Baird again. I think we'll get hailed. But at this point, I think we're going to go back. I'm going to take the Xenorphica back to our home base. I'm going to resupply because we're really low on supplies at this point from all the repairs. And then we're going to dress up the Xenorphica, and we're going to take it for a quick spin in the... What's it called? The... Simulation. Ooh, words. And I'll show you just how fun and interesting this ship is. It is a powerful, powerful ship. So let's go do that, and I'll see all of you in just a minute. Okay, folks, welcome back. We are back home orbiting Larch, the arid world. And I got a notice that our colony is actually size 5. It actually happened last episode, but I forgot about it until now, so oopsie. But we now have a colony that is size 5, and we're already 4.3% in, and growth has slowed. Look at that, 1.67 per month. We have a ways to go before it's full size at size six. Six is the maximum size that you can grow a colony to. Note that the reason for that is sort of a story reason because there's a limited number of people in the sector and this is a logarithmic size. So size five means that there are tens of thousands of people, sorry, hundreds of thousands of people. And size six means millions of people. And there are only, as I recall, like a couple of billion in this whole sector. So it used to be you could grow your colonies to size, I think, eight. But that actually sort of broke the lower a bit because you ended up with more people in your colonies than basically the entire sector. So they kept it at six. Anyway, I'm going to come in here and we are going to add in light industry because, well, for a couple of reasons. One... Fuel production is slow, and we don't have the... Well, we have, I think, an item that will give us a bonus to it, but it requires no atmosphere. Do we have one? Yes, fuel production, no atmosphere. So, it doesn't work here, because there's an atmosphere here. We don't want to do heavy industry, because the nanoforge that we can put on it will cause pollution, and there's a permanent increase in the hazard rating. We could go refining, but again, there is an item, and I think we also have one over here, 
that increases... Uh, no, we do not have it this time. Okay, so we still need to find one. But it increases the refining output, but again requires no atmosphere. Tech mining we could do... And we do have widespread ruins, so what I might do is I may hold out on this until we hit size 6 and then just fire it up then. Because I want to get us getting some more income going here, and light industry is going to be the way to go there. So we're going to go ahead and build that. Get some of this going on. And this will produce domestic goods and luxury goods, and we'll export those. That are already in about three months. We're also getting to the size where other factions will start sending expeditions to try to disrupt one of our industries because we have too much of the sector's pie, so to speak. And so we need an orbital station. And I am thinking... I usually like the high-tech ones because they look cooler. But they're as far as the game goes, as long as you are not taking part in the battle, they all function the exact same. But you know what? I like high-tech because it looks cooler, so we'll take it. They otherwise have the same effect, they cost the same, etc. Now, this will make it so that when potential attackers come, they will have to deal with the station first before they can possibly attack our colonies. And once they do that, they'll have to get through our defenses. We don't have great defenses because we don't have the upgrade here to have batteries. Let's go ahead and do that. Ooh. That's a pricey one, though. Man. All right. Have it your way. Yeah, I think we'll just do that. Ugh. We're under a million. It hurts me. And, yeah, so that is that for our colony, for now. As far as the Xenorphica, the Ziggurat, I have outfitted it in pretty close to what I usually prefer. I like to do either Heavy Needlers or Ion Pulsers in these, uh, I think they're Universal Slots. Yep, the Universal Slots. Since I only had a couple Heavy Needlers, I did both. So, there. I put missiles in these slots here. They're kind of more just emotional support missiles because I almost never fall back on these. I, they're pretty, honestly, useless. These are the guns that we use the most. And I like plasma cannons. You can do tachyon lances. You could do giga cannons, but I'm not a fan of them. But the way that this thing fights, you'll see why we don't bother with things like the high density lasers or the autopost lasers, because you don't want to be unfazed for very long. Now, as far as the hall mods went, I put in the ITU, and I built it in just to get the OP back a little bit. This is the ship to use phase anchor on. If you don't have any phase anchor in your fleet, and you get this ship, this is the one to use it on. Because, again, if you lose the ship, it is gone. Gone, gone, you can't get it back without saves coming. And Phase Anchor says that, well, one, it reduces the Phase Cloak's activation cost to zero, which is great because it's normally 320. It also increases the soft flux dissipation and weapon recharge rate by two while phased, meaning that our soft flux will drop a lot faster, almost as fast as our weapons can generate it, and also our weapons will recharge faster. That does include the delay, the refire delay, or things like plasma cannons and the heavy needlers. It does not, however, help with recharging. So bear that in mind. I also give armor weapon mounts because these are going to get hit occasionally because it is a phase ship, so no shields. And resistant flux conduits, one to help with EMP damage from taking hull hits, as well as because we might need to vent aggressively and the extra 25% dissipation rate really, really helps. So let's go fight another ship. Let's just pick one for now. And we are going to pilot this ship. And you'll see it immediately begins popping out these moats. Now watch, I'm gonna right click. We're phased, we're out. 
we can just pop in and pop out. As soon as those purple lights go off, we can phase back in. I got real rough news for you, buddy. So, it will try to shoot down our moats. We can, of course, use our ship system to send these at the enemy. Now, it'll usually shoot most of them down, but as you can see, they hit the shield, and now half the ship is shut down. And we generate more straight away, and can do that. Now, what we can do here is we can pop out and just start working on shields and basically never get hit. Oh, I got hit there, but okay. As you can see, when we are phased, this soft flux here drops like a rock. And so that is one of the huge, huge advantages of the ship, and is why it is so ridiculous of a ship. And we'll go ahead and just dump flux here. Take a few hits with its uh, kinetic weapons, which is like no damage to us. We're still full hull. Pop in here and shut down your guns again, dude. And no guns for you. Sorry. gone. So yes, this ship is redonkulous, and do note that it is actually less powerful now than when we fought it. One, because we are not an alpha core, so we don't have the gazillion combat skills that those ships have, or that those pilots have. And two, it is actually beat up. Like one, we have the demods on it, and also the moats you can see are no longer purple, they are blue. They are a little bit lower power than the original moats, and we don't get as many of them, and I don't think they were charged as fast. Like, the original ship, if these were getting blown up, it would just pull out a stream of these constantly. But there's a bit of a delay in us getting our moats back. So, yep, it isn't as powerful, but, I mean, we took no damage. Our armor is almost completely intact, too. So, yep, we are pretty powerful in this ship. Go ahead and end that. Now, I am going to leave this here for the most part. One, because, again, our, well, any fleet can identify us with it. But two, it costs 75 supplies per month. And that also means 75 supplies to deploy into battle. And it costs 75 deployment points. So if you're running this ship, you are not going to be running a whole lot of other ships along with it. That and our actual character build isn't really designed for piloting this ship. We would want to have things like impact mitigation and field modulation and probably probably systems expertise would be nice, but we'd need a whole bunch more of other red skills. So we're going to leave it here for the most part. If we need a really big heavy hitting ship, we'll bring it out sometime. But in general, it stays here. Also, adding or removing ships modifies your CR, which drives me nuts because you end up blowing a lot of resources on just holding ships in your fleet. Anyway, everyone, that is going to about do it for the episode. I hope you found this one enlightening in as far as how to tackle the Ziggurat, as well as pushing along the Galatia Academy quests. I think in the next couple episodes... I want to, one, we're going to go and keep going on the Glacier Academy quest because it is an important one, but also I think we might take a bit of a break or at least start the next episode with a couple of bounties because, not that one, because I found one over here. We've got two legions and an onslaught. Now these are, I believe, the standard ones. These are not the 14th Battlefleet ones. But it would be nice to get our hands on some of these low-tech 
capital ships, and this is a prime chance to do so. So I think we might give that a whirl. But yes, anyone? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Let me know what you think in the comments. And as always, my name is Hasn't Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.